Alrighty everybody, so this video is going to be basically an overview of me throwing the uh, rods and pistons back in it. They're the same rods and pistons I took out. The only thing I'm doing here is changing the rings, regapping the rings, and throwing the pistons back in and putting new rod bearings on and then be done with it. This is not a how you should do it rebuild. This is a half ass rebuild. I'm not checking a whole bunch of stuff because this was a running motor when I took it apart. The only things I'm changing are the bearings and the uh, piston rings and I'm regapping the rings for a boosted application. So I'll go over the piston ring gap in a little bit, but this is just a uh, overview of so far I am gapping the rings for each piston for each cylinder. And each cylinder has a rod that's numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. Every piston has an orientation they have to go in. There's an arrow for facing forward to the motor. So each piston will have an arrow right on this side. And you'll see pictures of it. And you'll see pictures of the numbers on the rods. But every single piston and rod has to go back in the exact same hole I took it out of. I'm just gapping each ring set for each cylinder on each hole to make sure they're the correct gap for my future boosted application. And again, I will cut to going over the piston ring gap setup and why I'm choosing that. But this is just, right now I am gapping the rings for the one, two, three side. I'll put the one, two, three side together. I'll put probably five and six together and then I'll video the number four actually doing it to sort of give you an idea. It's just doing once times uh, six or five however you look at it. But I am right now in the middle of gapping all the rings for this side. This is the second compression ring that's in there right now. Don't know if you can kind of see it. My fingers on it. Um, I am gapping them now with my feeler gauge. So, this is generally how I'm going to do this. Just because it was a running motor when I took it out, I am reusing 90% of the parts. The only things I am changing are the consumables, which are the main and rod bearings and the piston rings. And the piston rings are being regapped to keep the piston from breaking when the rings touch. So I'll be able to throw much more aggressive timing and boost at this without the risk of destroying the pistons due to the rings touching. But again, I'll move over to explaining it on the computer and how I'm going and the spec I'm putting these at. But for right now, I'm going to continue gapping these and assembling majority of the uh, rotating assembly. Alright, so let's go over the why I'm doing the ring gaps and the reasons why I'm doing the ring gap the way I'm doing it. So, for any engine build, for what you're doing the engine for, or using the engine for, or if you're doing a boosted or nitrous or even a natural aspirated application you have to set up your ring gaps now the biggest the first line of failure on this engine from what i could tell by the limited of knowledge you can find on these engines both the ohv and the single driver cam run into problems with the piston rings more so on the single or head cams because they have a slightly higher compression ratio. OHV is a little bit more lenient but they still run into this problem because of how inefficient they are and how hot they run. So on your screen 
there is the Haynes manually Haynes manual spec dimension spec and specifications for the OHV engine the piston ring gap spec the compression rings are right here from 15 thousandths to 23 thousandths and the oil ring is from 15 thousandths to 55 thousandths um, there is a general equation to know what ring gap you should go with and that's kind of like this it's from Wesco I believe that's the company that makes pistons they give you a general idea on what you should put the piston rings do to but it's again it's a general idea to give you so I only went to this for the equation here your bore size by basically what they figured out would be the best bet for a given application um, basically this application I'm doing on this motor in is going to be like street moderate turbo nitrous it's not gonna this engine is probably not gonna see over 10 pounds of boost maybe 12 I believe that's the area that I will be maxing out the M90 supercharger that be that will be uh, putting on this engine so when you do the equation of the engine bore size versus the what they have down here so it's a bore times their number and with the bore generally being a 3.95 for 3 inch size um, when you do it against this number the rounding out the numbers you would get it to 20 thousandths gap for the top ring and 22 thousandths for the second ring but I know how inefficient this engine is. It's one of the reasons why it's a very gutless engine. Um, I'm actually going to open up the gap a little bit more just for my preference. Um, I'm going to open up the top ring gap to 23 thousandths and the second ring gap 25 thousandths. Now that is just out of the spec range of the compression rings end gap and I'm doing that mainly for heat the problem this engine has is one it's so inefficient and two it's like it runs hot the way it's designed it doesn't flow air that well so the air can get very heat soaked and I will be putting an intercooler on the M90 to try and get the intake temperatures to as ambient as possible to hopefully not run into this problem but also max out the blower and be very very reliable as I can make it under stock parameters and stock configuration in terms of RPM I'm running intake air temp fueling and try and keep the ignition timing mostly stock not retarded as much but I would like to try and advance it but this is where this whole ordeal becomes a big experimentation um, I'm just kind of just experimenting see what I can do what things can I manipulate for the least amount of money and doing it this way, just replacing rod bearings and rings and gap in the rings, I can get it pretty cheap, see what the engine can do, what is going to be its limits, how far can I push it, and when it blows up, it blows up. I'll do an analysis when it blows up, and then probably put another one in and try it again with some slightly different parts. That's the whole point of this. Um, the second line of failure on these engines is the uh, rod bolts, but that's mostly if you spin the engine over, I think, 6,000 RPM. 
the single driver cam engines you can spin well over 6500 but on the OHV models it's really pointless they run out very close to 5000 rpm most of the time these engines only peak horsepower right under 5000 the cam I'm putting in this motor says it runs out at 52 I don't even know if I'll spin it that fast I'm probably going to keep this engine RPMs within 5,000 RPM, which should keep the lower end together, and then with the piston rings file down, generally I shouldn't see this engine blow up, but the torque that this engine is going to put out, I might actually break something with the torque. Horsepower wise, I don't think this engine will blow up. The torque will probably kill this thing, but that's something I will have to find out. But again, this is an experimentation. This is just kind of going over uh, the piston ring gaps. So I am basically using this equation to get me kind of in the ballpark, and then I just open it up a little bit more. So I'll put this in the description, the uh, link. And I am putting the top ring at 23 thousandths and the second compression ring at 25 thousandths. And then the uh, oil ring is going to be roughly around 15 to 20 thousandths. And that's pretty much what I'm doing with the ring gap. So we'll go back to now actually installing the piston. Alrighty now, I'm on the last one to install. So we're going to go over... Reading it and then installing this. I've already checked the uh, plastic gauge, the uh, rod bearing, one number one. It's good, so they're all fine. So, number four piston. What we're going to do here is we're going to grab my rings. That's the second one. First, we're going to check the Ring gap for the oil control. It's the wrong package. Here we go. There we go. This one. This one. Basically, let me grab my feeler gauges too. For the way I have this set up, and I think I got the rings that are slightly undersized. Because the gaps on them are a little bit bigger than normal. But for what I'm doing to this engine, I'm okay with it. So this is one oil control ring. What we're doing is... Making sure it's even, and we're checking about 10 to 15 thousandths. Do you want the gap in there? You're not going to be able to see it because it's kind of dark, but I'm running my feeler gauge in between the gap. This is probably more like 15 thousandths on all these, but that one's okay. Try to check the next one. What I'm doing here is to level the ring to make sure it's flat like it's on the piston. Yeah, that one's good too. So we're going to... Grab the. If you're wondering, I'm using Hastings piston rings. Just OEM replacement piston rings, nothing special. So we got the second compression ring. Let's do this for now. Put that somewhere. Alright, that'll work. Second pick. Second compression ring, 
Doing it at 25 thousandths. Alright, for the Hastings compression rings, the second compression ring, it has this, uh, I don't know if you can see it, right at the tip there, there's a dot indentation. That means there's an orientation for this ring. This is up, so we're going to check the gap of this ring, that dot up. Use the piston to flatten the ring out. And the se second compression ring, I'm putting it at 25 thousandths. Now, a lot of these rings were pretty much right there anyway, which I'm fine with. This way. Okay, so this is one I actually have to grind a little bit, open the gap a little bit. So here I got a little cheapy sting ring filer. And just real carefully file it down a little bit yes. not too much of a lip on that I might do a little bit more because it was very tight Okay, there's no lip edge I can feel. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're good there. Okay. So hopefully that files down enough. Check it again. And I pretty much did this on all the cylinders. You're just watching me do one of them. Check it. Need a little bit more. Twenty five thousandths. Perfect. All right, that ring is good. in the box and then the top ring now the top ring here has no orientation it can be this way or it could be that way there's no orientation on the top ring so only the second ring the ring that has the dot and the top ring we're having the gap at 23 thousandths, so I'll put it in there. check it.
I know you're not going to be able to see down in there. But that's good. Top ring's good enough for where it is. Basically, down in there you're doing this. And you're checking for just ever so slightly drag. That's it. So the top ring is actually quite perfect at 23 thousandths. Second ring it's 25 thousandths. And then let's put on the oil control rings. Mm. That there. Alright, so for putting these rings on, hopefully you can see right there, they butt up against each other. They do not overlap, they butt up against each other. Also, if you could see, there is a shelf on both sides of this, on the inner side of the uh, oil control ring. You have to put this on first and then the those oil control rings. So let's see. It's on. They're butted up against. Now you grab these. And these ones you can walk on very carefully to the shelf see there's one on there's two the oil control rings are on grab the second compression ring and I have, here it is, piston ring, expander, this is the second compression ring that has the dot right there at the end of my finger, real carefully, and expand it. All right, they're good. They're in there. All right, so now with putting this on. We have, I always put these ring gaps 180 degrees out of each other just to help with the compression. Come on, move. Why aren't you moving? Okay, so one oil gap ring there, one oil gap ring there. They're 180 degrees out from each other. Bottom, second compression ring is going to be on the bottom. Top compression ring will be on the top. Now this is number four cylinder. Like I showed before, they're stamped. And also, you can see there's an arrow points to the front of the motor. As I said before, you cannot mix these up. They are made for a certain cylinder diameter and they meant to go in there one way. Again, I don't know where this, this damage came from the piston. I think it came from the head. Someone said in the comments before that it could have been um, spark knock. Not totally sure, it very well could be because this engine doesn't have any sort of knock sensor whatsoever. But 
we are going to run it anyway. All rings are 180 degrees out, so now we're going to dunk the piston head in there. Grab my rod bearings. My last two rod bearings. Come on. Damn plastic. Come on, come on. That one on there. Be done with these uh, bearings. Walk. One thing I have to do. Get my one rag here. Oil this wrist pin a little bit. To come over here, oil up the cylinder wall. Got to use that lubrication. Okay, here's my assembly lube. Probably did a little much on that one. Oh well. All the rings are oiled. Number four cylinder, so get there. I'm leaking oil everywhere. So arrow facing forward. Grab my piston ring compressor. This is just a cheapy one you can get at almost any auto parts store, or even the internet. It's an adjustable one. Let's see, how well did that compress? It looks like it compressed it. Good enough. Line that arrow up to the front. Arrows on the front. Grab the hammer. I'm using the butt of the hammer. Put that flush with the block. Boom in there. This is where you get really, really careful. I always make sure the crank is on the lowermost point of the stroke for the cylinder I'm installing. And then I guide the rod over the crank very carefully. It's on there. Grab the rod bearing. There we go. No dirt. No nothing. Grab some assembly lube. Just like you're gonna brush your teeth or sort of like that. Number four, rod cap. 
come under here. Remember lock, remember this lock always goes up to the other lock. Number four stamp is on this side. So lock over there, nothing over here. Start them on my hand. Grab torque wrench and do a stage one torque for the rods. This one click. I'll have to do stage two torque on all the rod bolts, but I'll flip it around and do that. I'll grab this and you should that seems pretty damn good to me. I'll flip this over and finish torquing all the rods but that's installing the piston gap in the rings and everything that I'm putting this motor out to this motor will probably survive up until a certain point but I'm going to keep it within parameters in which the camshaft and the motor can survive. Basically running this engine over 5,000 RPM is pretty much worthless. The peak power is usually right at 5,000 or right below 5,000. By the cam I have, the cam says the power band ends at 5,200. I don't know if I will actually rev this engine that high because it is incredibly inefficient in terms of valve train and the valves and head it's incredibly inefficient so and we gap the rings to make the pistons last longer for under boost and I'm not putting rod bolts in this because again rod bolts are only good for revving the engine past 5000 rpm right now there's no reason for me to do the rod bolts if the rod bolts fail and it blows up that way well then I'll throw another engine back together like this with rod bolts in it but usually rod bolts are to keep the engine together past 6000 rpm and you do that to a single overhead cam engine not this OHV engine but this engine is going to be an experiment we'll see how long it lasts I expect it to blow up once I start pushing the uh, the boost at its limit of the M90 on this, but we'll see. But let me uh, spin it over, torque the rest of the uh, rod bolts completely, and then probably next video would be installing the cam.